Good morning. Even as the city continues to celebrate the Stanley Cup champions after defeating the Vegas Golden Knights in five games back on June 7th, the business side of the game continues for the Washington Capitals. Over the last few weeks, as the Caps have soared to unprecedented heights in franchise history, the team has also begun to secure its future. Defenseman John Carlson set career highs in goals, assists, and points during the regular season, rose to new heights during the Stanley Cup playoffs as he led all blue liners in points during the postseason. On June 25th, Carlson re-signed with the Capitals for eight more seasons, a homegrown defenseman drafted by the Capitals, brought up in this organization, and a player who has made Washington his home. Without question, one of the best deadline deals in recent NHL history, defenseman Michael Kempney helped anchor a defensive core that stayed remarkably healthy on the way to winning a Stanley Cup championship. On June 29th, Kempney agreed to stay in Washington for four more years, and now Washington's top four defensemen under contract for the foreseeable future. Carlson at eight years, Dmitry Orlov for five, Kempney for four, and Matt Niskanen for three. Additionally, the Capitals have also solidified its bottom six forwards in the last few weeks, bringing back playoff hero Devontae smith pelly signing free agent forward Nick Dowd, and bringing back Travis Boyd. As Washington heads into next season as defending champions, the roster continues to evolve, and training camp will ultimately determine what next year's team looks like. Evolution this summer not limited to players on the roster. The coaching staff continues to evolve as well. With that in mind, please welcome Senior Vice President and General Manager Brian McClellan. Thanks, John. Uh, first of all, thanks for everyone for coming. Um, obviously, we're here to officially name Todd Reardon as our new head coach. Um, I'm personally excited for Todd, for the, the time he's put in um, developing his skills and developing player skills uh, throughout his career. Um, so I'm excited for his opportunity, and I, I'm excited for our uh, organization to, um, to uh, play under Todd. Um, we feel fortunate as an organization, and I feel fortunate as a manager, that we have an internal candidate of uh, Todd's quality, um, that he's ready to step in to build on what we've accomplished last season, and I would anticipate a seamless transition. Um, you know, a little bit of why we chose Todd. Um, you know, I have a couple of key things that uh, are important for me. Uh, the first being development. Um, he's got a proven track record of working well with defensemen. Um, I can't tell you how many ex-players, current players, new players, how highly they re regard him and what he's done for their careers and how he's developed them throughout their career. I mean, he has the ability to take young guys and make them better, and he has established guys, and he, he tweaks their games and makes them better. Um, you know, I think one of the best examples is Michael Kempney came in here. Uh, we thought highly of him, and he had a couple things he needed to work on in his game, and he assimilated quickly under Todd's leadership and, you know, became a good player, and we ended up re-signing him. Uh, the other thing is communication. Um, I think Todd, Todd has a unique ability to communicate with high-end players and with uh, depth players. I mean, he runs the gamut on that. Um, you know, he has a track record with working with high-skilled players in Pittsburgh on the power play, um, and also with us here in uh, Washington, high-skilled players. Uh, communicates really well with them. and. Um, has been good for our high-end guys. Also, our, our, our uh, depth players. He, he works well with our depth players. I think he has a great understanding of what it is to be one of those guys and how to work at your game and um, shows a lot of compassion for those types of players. And then the last thing, I mean, he's, he's technically sound. I mean, he's, he's got a good grasp of systems, where the game is right now. Um, he's not afraid to be creative. Uh, systematically, um, so he's 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 open-minded to trying new things and and being on the cutting edge of what we're doing systematically. Um, so with that, I'm excited for Todd, um, and I would like to turn it over to him now. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for those uh, 
uh, very strong statements on my behalf. And um, I, I sit in front of you today and, and truly tell you it's an honor and a privilege to be the Washington Capitals head coach. Uh, it's, uh, I, I want to start by thanking Ted Leonsis, um, Dick Patrick, and Brian McClellan and the entire Washington Capitals organization for believing in me and giving me this opportunity to be here today in front of you. I additionally would like to uh, sp pay special attention to um, my wife, Shelby, and my son, Travis, who have uh, been along this uh, journey with me, the sacrifice, the support, the belief they've had in me to one day be able to get this opportunity. I, I certainly could not be there, be here today without them. Uh, additionally, I would like to thank Barry Trotz four years ago for bringing me into this organization, making me a part of his staff, bringing me to Washington, and making me fall in love with this area. Underneath Barry, I was able to learn and grow and uh, in preparation for a day like today. Uh, that was always a goal that he talked to me about was, I want you to be ready and prepared for an opportunity where it's your press conference, and today I'm able to re reach that goal. In the same breath, I'd like to say that I'm um, extremely proud to be part of uh, Barry's staff this past year and help him um, along the way in terms of reaching a, a coaching goal and dream of raising the Stanley Cup. And I loved and I'm extremely proud to be a part of that staff uh, and, and, and taking those lessons that we learned and, and moving forward with that. I think it's, uh, I expect this to be a, an extremely uh, uh, seamless transition. And I think the reason I, I can make that statement is because I've been here for four years. Okay, I know everyone from the top of the organization to the bottom of the organization, and I've been able to establish work relationships with them, um, been able to, to go through a number of different exercises with people uh, throughout the organization. And I just think that the way that Brian has done a phenomenal job of bringing back a large majority of our uh, championship team, um, the, the continuity of, of having me take over as their head coach will, will ease any of that transition. I think the opportunity that I've had the last four years to work day in and day out with a world-class staff, whether I'm talking about uh, our equipment staff, our medical staff, our strength and conditioning, it is a world-class staff that prepares our athletes to be able to have success. And finally, I'm going to be able to add some key members uh, to our staff that, that have been here and been through this exercise and, and, and climbing to the top of the, of the mountain as, a, as an organization. Really excited to be having Blaine Forsyth come back. He's done an outstanding job uh, with our center Iceman and on our power play over the last four years. Really excited about the, the uh, continuing to see Scott Murray, our head goalie coach, was completely in charge this past year as our goalie coach. The work he did with uh, Braden and, and Phil this last year was outstanding. Uh, continue to watch him grow um, as a young coach. And then um, the importance of having two really strong video coaches with Brett Leonhardt and Tim Ohashi uh, will continue to be part of our staff and continue to make us the most prepared team um, going into games and, and breaking down film after. And then the all-important coaches challenge, which is uh, a huge part of our game today. These guys are, are top notch in terms of being able to, to do those things. So you can see how that continuity is really setting us up for a seamless transition here. In closing, I'd like to thank um, members of the media that are here today um, to continue to grow um, and build on the momentum that our team um, has uh, accomplished this past year by winning the Stanley Cup. Uh, it's, it's people like yourselves that continue to put out uh, uh, the positives of what our organization is doing and, and the direction that we're headed and how we're doing it. And taking away some time right before the July 4th holiday, I appreciate you guys coming out to continue to build and, and, and make this an amazing hockey town and, and really build hockey in the DMV. Lastly, I'd like to thank our fans. Uh, our fans have just really went to a completely different level this year. They've been through some disappointment in the past, but they never quit on us. They never quit on us, and in turn, they were able to be a part of an amazing experience this, this summer in raising that Stanley Cup, and I truly believe we would not have accomplished that without them. So, thank you. This time, if uh, you want to, Isabel, if you want to lead us off. Brian, you mentioned kind of the importance of the interview process. What did that reveal? And Todd, if you could also answer kind of how you sold your vision to Mac. Um, I, I mean, I think, you know, I've had a relationship with Todd over the last four years here, so I, I kind of knew where he was on a lot of issues. I think the interview process was more 
You know, I mean, Todd came in and treated it like a normal interview, went through his systems book and just kind of, you know, verified some things. I asked him a few questions on how he, how he might handle some cer certain situations as a head coach and um, more or less a formal process of going through the interview and was more than comfortable going through it. Yeah, I would say it was a, a really extensive interview process, a little bit more than four years. I've been going through that interview <laughs> process with him. Um, but, uh, you know, that's that's the, the another exciting facet is uh, the relationship that Brian and I have. Um, and uh, moving forward, uh, the way we, we view the game. Um, but it was really important that we sit down um, in the head coach and general manager um, you know, roles and, and go through the process. And um, I feel as though uh, I was thoroughly prepared um, um, and had a number of uh, details to prove what I was all about. We've talked uh, casually about it, but, um, you know, we went through a, a few hour process of, of making sure that we were on the same page in terms of how we want to continue to, to develop our players is a huge part of where um, this organization is headed. And, and it has to be given the salary cap issues. and and uh, continuing to move forward. So it was a, a great process for me where I learned uh, quite a bit about some of the vision that um, Brian has moving forward, but also a chance for me to share um, some, new, some new ideas and some, some different thoughts moving forward. Todd, how do you plan to approach kind of the expectations of taking over a Stanley Cup champion that has most of its roster together? What is your approach, I guess, taking over at that kind of team? And Mac, what did you learn from Todd in that interview process that says he is the right guy to to be the person to kind of accept those expectations? Well, I think on, from from my end, I think uh, you know certainly it's a unique challenge. Um, there, there's no need to try to put that any any other way than it is. Um, we're coming. I'm coming into a situation where we've had success and we've been able to to get uh, the biggest prize in the game in our hands, and we did it a certain way. And there's there's going to be uh, many things that, that stay the same, um, but there's going to be some things that, that I think I have to be cognizant of with a team that's going to be repeating. I think I want to create an environment that players are, are going to be continue to be challenged uh, with new ideas and, and new ways to improve their games. Okay, but I still want to create a, an environment where they are enjoying coming to the rink. And in the same breath, I want to make sure that they're held accountable to a certain standard because that's what's expected from our team and, and to allow us to continue to move forward here uh, with, with as little disruption as possible, uh, but just uh, the voice at the end of the day being a little bit different. So I'm, I'm extremely excited about the chance. Yeah, I, I think for me, um, you know, Todd, Todd's at that point in his career where he's earned a head coaching job. I mean, he's, he's put in all the work. He's got all the experience. Uh, it's just a matter of seeing him behind the bench in control. Um, you know, I have all the faith in the world that he can accomplish it. Um, he's, just, he's just ready to do it right now. If you have a uh, question, just uh, raise your hand. We'll bring the mic around to you. Uh, Brian, go ahead. Hey, guys. Brian McNally, Sports Capital, NHL.com. Uh, Todd, congrats. Thank you, Brian. Um, just uh, along those lines that, that Steve mentioned, have you reached out to any coaches who have done this before who have taken over a championship team and not uh, maybe a team uh, you know, in the middle of the pack or a team that had to make a change for other reasons? And if you have, what, what lessons did they tell you or what challenge is, challenges did they mentioned to you that you need to expect? I can speak on my behalf, and, and I have reached out. Um, I've done uh, lots of research already, and, and you know, not necessarily with this exact situation, because like we spoke about, this is a unique one. Um, but I have talked about the, the challenge of repeating and, and different uh, pitfalls that can come your way. And I feel as though I uh, already have made adjustments to our schedule, um, adding different things into uh, our normal everyday routines to be able to keep this fresh and challenging and motivating. Um, I'm an extremely passionate guy about delivering my message on the game and giving a clear visual of how we can do it. And um, that will be the exciting part is the, the number of opportunities that I now get to do and deliver that message. Um, dealt with uh, going through players that have had um, some things that have worked really well for them and things that haven't worked so well and given these scenarios. And I'm I'm really excited about um, implementing these, and like I said, they're they're already um, on on the calendar moving forward about uh, keeping things um, in, in a, a really um, motivating um, new um, opportunity because it, it is truly a new opportunity, despite the fact that we have one in the past. 
Uh, Todd, uh, Mac mentioned a moment ago you had to grind your way to the top as a player, kind of had to do it a little bit as a coach as well. Being there for every step of the way, how has that helped you get ready for this day? I assume you've been preparing for this for, I don't know, a dozen years or so. Yeah, I think that's – I, I would say, you know, going on, uh, going into probably my 11th year of coaching. Um, but, uh, you know, I think I, I have a, a unique path um, that, that uh, has really allowed me to be able to really um, relate to every single player in the room. And that started even from my first steps as a college coach uh, and then moving into becoming an American League head coach and then now reaching the, uh, uh, the you know, the top of – top of the ladder in terms of the National Hockey League. I, I think my playing experiences allowed me to understand what it took to get one, just one NHL game, and then in the same breath be able to be um, playing alongside some some fabulous players, uh, whether that was Chris Pronger and my, my time in St. Louis or, or different opportunities that I had along my playing way. But uh, uh, in addition to that, I, I started at the bottom in, in, in my coaching um, you know, I'd say my coaching uh, path, and and for me, starting at the college level and understanding how to relate to young players, and then move up to the American League and and see how um, you can really have a huge role in the development of players and helping them get that first NHL game is something that's an amazing experience to be a part of. I was so happy to have gone through those steps, and then to be able to get the opportunity to work with obviously world-class players that um, I've been able to be around for the last eight years and in particular the last four years here and see how they've grown into the champions that we are today and that path and being along with them is, is really really I think helped me round into the coach that I am today and I've certainly never been in a hurry to get to this spot I've always tried to take um, you know certain lessons from each scenario that was placed in front of me but um, you know I, I can't Again, can't thank Barry Trotz enough for um, the way that he utilized me on the staff and, and um, you know, the way that he delegated responsibility and set me up for today's experience where um, my ability of not just dealing with the defenseman but working with the power place and now I'm dealing with, with Ovi and Backstrom and Kuznetsov and, and uh, you know, then being able to work on uh, five on six situations at the end of the game where the other team's pulling their goalies and now I'm dealing with Tom Wilson and Lars Eller and, uh, Brooks Orpik in those situations and guys that have helped us defend leads and uh, so right there I've been able to kind of cover you know the gamut of the of the people that are in our room and, and really establish relationships with them on a number of different levels so I, I really feel I'm prepared because of all those uh, steps that I've gone and, and for me it's very similar to how our team feels right now and when you have to go through uh, a journey to get somewhere uh, and go through some adversity to get somewhere, it, it, it tastes that much sweeter. And I think that's what we were able to see and the excitement you're able to see from uh, the Caps players raising that cup. I mean, you cannot cannot describe how Alex Ovechkin looked uh, in the playoff uh, run and, and finally to be able to put that cup over his head. And it wouldn't have been so well, so good for him, I think, if it just happened day one. And now the fact that he's had to earn it and earn it uh, uh, under quite a bit of scrutiny made it that much sweeter and that's kind of how I feel about my uh, path here to the top. Todd, uh, when did you start thinking about coaching? Was it during your playing days or did, or, and, and when did you start thinking, hey, I could be a head coach in the NHL? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question and um, um, this is one I could be real long-winded on because uh, I played, I played for a number of coaches along the way, but um, uh, that kind of, I've, I've always had for some reason um, you know, maybe given my upbringing and uh, uh, an athletic family, um, always kind of had a certain respect for coaches and, and liked their um, different ways that they were able to describe and give me a different message to improve. And um, I think, uh, you know, I, I look back on some experiences that I had with Jerry York, who um, was my coach at, at Bowling Green, and, um, you know, just how uh, one of the top coaches in all of college hockey history um, as, a, as a great, um, you know, probably stepping stone for me, understanding what it took to coach young people and not just help them develop as hockey players, but develop as young people. And it got me thinking of how my path of being a walk-on and then turning into a, a scholarship player there and, and setting myself up for a pro career was really done by him. And the way he dealt with me was uh, something I've gone back and, and looked at and as a, as a huge part of 
uh, of, of some of the things I use today. Um, I think probably the coach that, that um, most uh, gave me some, co uh, some coaching responsibilities was Todd McClellan. It was during a, a strike lockout year in, in Houston uh, playing for the Arrows where it was a, a split dual affiliate um, there. Obviously, there was a, a lot of players that uh, were in abundance looking to play uh, hockey during a, a non um, pro professional environment. So, um, you know, at the, at the National League level. So he was uh, the head coach down in Houston, and um, he was someone that, uh, through injury, um, approached me about um, would you mind taking a, a, a look at some video and helping some of um, uh, our young players? I just feel like you have the knack and, and you do a great job of helping our young players, forwards, defensemen, whatever it was, help climb and understand what it takes to make it to the NHL. I guess at that point, I probably should have stopped playing hockey. And once a, a coach tells you that, that it's maybe a good time to uh, uh, to start thinking about being uh, a coach. But uh, that was a strong indication that um, that was something. And I really loved, I loved every part of it. And I, I'm thankful that Todd um, threw that idea out to me. And um, and then probably, um, you know, going back to, to the coach that I had the most success with as a, as a player, you end up um, going back to some of the things that he did with you. And Joel Quinville for me was a guy that I was able to have my most successful um, uh, experiences with. And I think that he was really um, able to, to give me a very clear plan and it was honest. And those are things that I've really taken with me in my coaching style today is, is understanding that um, you know, there's no gray area um, when you're talking to a player. A player would, would rather hear sometimes some, some bad news. It may make for a, a difficult drive back to your apartment or your house after you're told this negative information, but at least they know where they stand. And I, I thought um, Joel did an outstanding job of, of, of being very upfront and honest and telling you what the expectation was and something, something I've used uh, um, quite often moving forward here. And, and uh, you know, and then obviously the coaches that I've been able to work under between Dan Bilesma and, and Barry Trotz and, and Todd Richards initially are have been outstanding role models for me and, and allowed me to kind of sculpt my own uh, personal coaching style moving forward here with a, taking a little bit from each of them and and being able to to really truly be prepared for today to happen. Hi Todd, congratulations. Thank you um, very much. You've mentioned Barry Trotz a couple times. Have you guys communicated in the last couple days since getting this position? Yes, for sure. Um, we have, and um, you know it's important to understand that um, I'm not here today, like I, I mentioned in my opener, is uh, without Barry um, taking a chance on me and hiring me to be, be part of the staff. And um, you know he's, uh, um, you know we've gone um, our own separate ways, and uh, you know in, in his situation. Uh, uh, making a decision that was, you know, best for him and his family, and, and moving on, um, and you know, certainly this is not something that uh, we ever envisioned playing out like this. But, but uh, I, I am certainly uh, excited to be um, in this spot right now, and, and being able to to take advantage of uh, the things that I was able to learn from him, and continue to to build on um, some things that we started uh, in our process here of becoming champs and. And, and move our organization forward and, and, and be, a, be a big part of uh, um, Washington Capital history uh, that uh, we were able to um, um, really uh, accomplish this year. Todd, Jonathan Warner, WTOP Radio, congratulations. Thank you very much. How comforting is it to have most of your roster returning for next year? Yeah, extremely, extremely uh, comforting for sure. And, and again, it's, it's Yes, I spent uh, quite a bit of time with the defensemen um, and uh, in the process in, of, of trying to improve them in, in, in all different ways. Um, I, I'm, I'm really big on uh, creating a plan for players and, and having them uh, definitely understand the clear visual of how they can get there. Um, but uh, for me, you know, because of the, of the responsibilities that Barry gave me and as my role grew a little bit becoming the associate coach here, I was able to really um, develop relationships up and down our lineup. And I think that's something that um, really puts me at ease uh, going into the situation. Um, obviously, every roster is going to look a little bit different and you're going to go through um, you know, adversity, whether it's uh, uh, injuries or, or adjustments that we 
make organizationally trade wise or call ups or different situations. But I just love the direction our team is headed. I love the, the speed that we play with now. I love the physicality that we still are able to have and, and really impose our will on uh, oppositions. And, and then I love the skill level that we have. We have some of the, the, the very best players in the world in their positions. And it's a, it's a very exciting time for, for Capitals hockey. And go back to my initial statement of how that's really an honor and a privilege to be coming into a situation like this where I get to work with these uh, um, really high-end players and, more importantly, people that represent the Washington Capitals. Todd, uh, first off, congratulations. Thanks, JJ. Um, you touched on this a little bit, but you've coached on the staff of two Stanley Cup winning coaches in Dan Bilesma and Barry Trotz. Um, two very different coaches, two very different situations in winning those Cups. I wonder, what did you learn from each coach that you can bring going forward and how you will be a head coach? And also, what did you learn in making your own voice and being your own head coach from those two very different contrasting styles? Yes, uh, very different coaching styles, and I think it's one of the um, you know the things I was initially excited about working with um, Dan Bilesma. Um, you know, just the the passion that uh, and, and attention to detail that he brought to the staff, and the way that he could challenge uh, um, some top end players that they have uh, in in Pittsburgh, and and get them to understand that the even the smallest of details had a hu huge impact on. Um, your, your ultimate plan moving forward. Uh, and, I, and to be able to see that through to a, a, the Stanley Cup success is, is a great visual and great experiences that I can lean upon heavily as we, we continue to uh, talk about uh, repeating here as, as uh, Stanley Cup champs. And you know, then I was able to surround myself and so, you know, excited to deal with a completely different coach in Barry Trotz that had extensive experience and um, had been a, a lifelong coach and um, you know, someone that uh, uh, also had climbed the ladder to, to make it to the top. And um, you know, his, uh, his motivations and, and ways that he was able to stimulate our group um, and, and have them uh, point them in the right direction through years of, of disappointment and coming up short, I think were, were things that I'm definitely going to take with me and, and utilize as, as motivational tools moving forward because that's something um, that we can really talk about. And then uh, the last thing would be the, the examples that, you know, that until you really go through the process, until you really get a taste and a feel of it, and that was the thing that I tried to express having had the prior experiences that I did, and I think I was able to add to our group without putting too much pressure on them, that there's nothing like it in the game of hockey. And uh, putting that cup over your, over your head is an amazing, amazing experience. And, and uh, to be able to see that uh, through from the beginning to the end with, with this group over the last four years was um, you know, something I'm extremely proud of and, and uh, you know, fortunate to be a part of and, and for, fortunate to be part of the plan moving forward as well. Todd, uh, Chris Russell, 106.7 The Fan. Congratulations, obviously. Thank you. Um, how do you go, you're clearly a great communicator. How do you go about developing that individual relationship with each and every individual player, knowing that each player has different needs and responds differently to your message or, or different messages and needs different things? Is, is, there, is there a master plan that you have, or, or is it different, again, for every player? It is. Uh... I'd love to say that there was a master plan that uh, I could just roll out for each individual, but it is absolutely um, every everyone is a, is a separate entity, um, and I think that's one of the things I love about coaching. Every day is different, um, and there's a new challenge in front of you, and I think that's the that's the luxury um, that you, that you have as being a, a coach, and obviously at the now at the very top um, um, rung of, of professional hockey coaching. So it's a uh, it's an awesome experience to go through with players because it's never going to go the same way. I think that the key for me is somehow establishing that trust. Establishing that trust that the player knows that we have a partnership and understanding of how we're going to do that to improve their game. Sometimes it's not on the ice, sometimes it's off the ice, sometimes it's a combination of on the ice and off the ice. Sometimes it's, you know, every year it's, it's a new message and it's a new 
it's a new plan that I have in front of these players to continue to set them in a situation to continue to grow as players. And it, it's, uh, it, it definitely covers the gamut. I can tell you that uh, there's been a number of different uh, ways that, that I've gotten to that uh, uh, final product. And, and, and more importantly, to tell you, there is no real final product with these guys. Every day, no matter if you're uh, um, a 37-year-old Brooks Orpik or you're um, an 18-year-old uh, um, you know, Ole Mata back in Pittsburgh um, coming to your, into your organization. It's a, it's a great opportunity to, to make a difference in people's lives and I think that's the one thing we talk a lot about is, is trying to just make sure that they're improving as hockey players on the ice but more importantly improving as young people and that's one of the responsibilities you have I feel as a coach is not just uh, um, telling someone who's going on the ice. Um, there's, there's a lot more to it. Um, and something I'm extremely passionate about. And I think the players know that I care. They know that I'm invested. They know I'm extremely passionate about trying to help them accomplish their dreams and their goals as young people. And it's, uh, uh, it's, it's not fake. If you, if, if you go about this in the wrong way, players see right through it, okay? They see right through it. And, um, you know, like I said, someday, sometimes it takes a, a half a year. Sometimes it takes two days. But once they know that it's a partnership and trying to improve them, at the end of the day that I'm the one who has the final say-so um, is important for them to know as well, but it allows for a really clear plan to uh, set them up for success.